This next guy, he's a, he's a regular at the Science Center E. Uh, he's measuring 5'10", uh, 150 pounds, Caucasian, blue eyes, male. Uh, I wouldn't commit a crime. <laughs> Dan Fitzpatrick, everyone. Hey everybody, uh, great to be here. I'm Dan Fitzpatrick. Um, I've got a really good feeling about the show tonight because I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I've been doing a ton of charity work lately, you know, helping the less fortunate. Um, just earlier today, I pulled the clog, the hair clog, out of my shower, and I since donated it to Locks of Love. <laughs> the great thing is that it's half cubic hair, so you'll never need a perm. <laughs> but, yeah. I recently acquired a set of uh, monogram towels. They have a fancy DF embroidered near the bottom. Now, the thing about the initials is that it makes it extremely difficult for most people to seal, but for a very select few people, very easy to take. Most of the time, Dakota Fanning doesn't even notice. <laughs> you may question my ethics, but I actually consider myself somewhat of an expert on uh, positive moral values because I went to Catholic school. Now, some people might say that Catholic schools provide their students with a fallacious education, but I simply can't agree with that mindset because I never learned what the word fallacious means. <laughs> and I heard a lot of you laugh. You thought fallacious was going to go in a fallatio molestation joke, and that's really, really mature, tasteful. You know, I'll have you know that in all my years, never once did a priest lay a finger on me, because the bishop always had dibs. <laughs> <laughs> really, though, the sheer amount of touching in, like, the average Catholic ceremony is troubling. In the Sacrament of Confirmation, there's an actual step called the laying on of hands, which is a very da dangerous name for an activity that involves 38 eighth graders and a 70-year-old man in a robe. <laughs> Even worse are the little fonts of holy water that they have. I mean, it's not so much actual water as like a germy dipping sauce that you're expected to smear on your face and chest. I mean, even afterwards, you can dip your hand in, lick it, and be, oh, somebody had a McGriddle on their way here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But what you don't learn in school, you learn from your family. I mean, for example, my dad always stresses to me the importance of writing thank you notes. I mean, my mom actually would not go on a second date with my dad until he wrote her a thank you note for the first one. <laughs> he has really sensual penmanship. Um, but, <laughs> That's, I don't even need to do anything else. <laughs> but um, he says that thank you notes are the keystone of his success because there's no better gesture than a thoughtful handwritten note. And that's a belief that has led to 19 extremely disappointing Christmas mornings. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Daniel, for your understanding. Why well, get no easy bake oven cooker? For last night, I took our Christmas money and spent it all on hookers. <laughs> the, the rhyming really helps relieve the disappointment. <laughs> but it's not even my past history that you know annoys me with thank you notes. I think it's just the fact that I hate, I hate mail. I mean, it's too slow, it's cruel. Um, it's just not right for the texting generation. I mean, I'm against any form of communication that involves licking. The, the event of the envelope must have been such a creep, like, so, you want to send a card to your grandma? How bad do you want it to get there? <laughs> On the other hand, texting doesn't normally require any sort of bodily excretions. <laughs> I mean, when you get a text when it arrives, you feel this warm, friendly little buzz and vibration in your pocket. Something I like to call the text massage. <laughs> it's nice. Um, when you get a naked photo on a text, you're happy, you get excited, you know, you think that's so hot. But when you get a naked photo in the mail, you think, am I being blackmailed? <laughs> when you get a death threat through a text, all you have to do to avoid a gruesome murder is to send it to your 15 closest friends. When you get a death threat in the mail, it's anthrax. <laughs> so, uh, I've been thinking a lot about my future lately. Um, originally, I had plans to start my own Christian fast food chain. Uh, I call it Burger King of the Jews. <laughs> we, we have a sale 
where our prices would fall three times every Friday. <laughs> but then, you know, then I think about how that would affect the obesity situation in America. People keep getting fatter and fatter. And I'm not blaming the obese here. I don't think anybody chooses to be 500 pounds. I believe they're born that way. <laughs> but even now, we've come across We've come across an easy, simple, like do-it-yourself weight loss, weight loss solution, but nobody's going for it. Um, by now, you of course realize I'm talking about flesh-eating bacteria. I mean, you'll see the pounds literally melt away. It makes weight watching, weight watching a thing of the past. Never more will you have to worry with the question, do my arms make me look fat? And it also curbs unhealthy eating habits. I'm pretty sure it's impossible to pick up a donut once you don't have any fingers. <laughs> and it'll run a lot of the uh, fast food chains out of business. Take KFC, for example. I mean, they'll lose a lot of brand appeal once they have to change their slogan to stump licking good. <laughs> Not to mention that it's extremely painful to eat food covered in gravy when your hands themselves are covered in open sores. <laughs> Alright, thank you everybody for coming out tonight.